welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today we are honored to have with us Christine Gala, Senior Director of Programs at the ION. Christine, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. I love um, our interviews. I love chatting with you all, and it's a pleasure to be here today. Well, Christine, it's our pleasure, and you know, especially because you're changing the world. And you know, at the ION, you're working each and every day toward building innovative cities. Christine, what does this mean? What do you mean by building innovative cities? Yeah, and George, that's such a good question because it's such a so big. And I, I think a few kind of talking points on what an innovative city means. I would tie it to the people. So when we talk about building an innovative city, we're not just talking about infrastructure that's smart. We're not just talking about buildings that are smart, roads that are smart. We're not just talking about street sensors, sensors in the street that perhaps pick up air quality data or different types of data. We're talking about building for people. So an innovative city puts its user first. It follows the design thinking process to put the citizen of that city first, asking questions like, do all people in the city have access to the opportunities in an equitable manner? It asks questions like, which type of people experience what type of problems and how do we bring those people in to talk about and solve those problems? So an innovative city in tackling all the sustainability goals puts its users first, because if you're not designing for the user of the city, well then what's the purpose of having a city, right? It's just a bunch of buildings. So innovation, putting that user first, getting the design thinking process activated, making sure you're asking the questions that include everybody in the city. And we, we talk, we'll talk a little bit later today about um, being equitable and creating access to opportunities. And I think that that is at the heart of what an innovative city does. This enables them to be sustainable and to be future focused. Sustainable and future focused. And so, these companies, you know, that are innovative, how have you seen companies utilize innovation not only to further their mission, but also to help achieve the sustainable development goals, those global goals, those 17 global goals of the United Nations? Yep, and that's such a good question. I'll talk specifically about goal 11, that sustainable cities and communities goal, because that's kind of where, where we focus on. Um, the first thing that really comes to mind is public-private partnerships. And I can talk a little bit about our partners at the ION too. So the ION is that anchor for Houston's 16-acre innovation district. And, and a brief uh, few sentences on the district and the ION. Um, a few years ago, Amazon launched its search for its second headquarters. And unfortunately, Houston did not even make the short list. It was overlooked. And we all kind of got ourselves together and said, well, why was that? Because we're innovation is in our DNA, right? We have taken men to the moon uh, for over 40 years, and we are now taking women to the moon with the Artemis mission. So why did they skip over Houston? Well, the answer was that we did not have a centralized innovation district. And so um, Rice Management Company out of Rice University stewarded this project and built a team that is building that district with those equitable and inclusive practices in mind. So queue up now the ION and the innovation district where we have public-private partners coming together. We have the city of Houston as one of our partners. We have Rice University kind of in the background stewarding this development. We have Microsoft as one of our first founding tenants and through the Microsoft Accelerate program, as well as their support of some of our accelerators, we've been able to translate that support into direct impact for our startups. So we're building an ecosystem through these partnerships. Chevron is also one of the founding partners of the ION. They're 
one of the first tenants in the building as well. Um, Baker Botts, a, a law firm, and offers legal advice to our startups. So what the ION does and what the district does is it really creates that place where centralized collisions, collaborations, and very purposeful connections can happen on a very frequent basis. So when we think about um, the companies within this ecosystem of innovation, I think about it as public-private partners coming together to put innovation as the goal, sustainable cities as the goal, and then instead of each tackling that goal in their silos, we're coming together and we're saying, well, what do you need help on? How do you do this? Oh, let me see your process for this. And together we're, we're tackling the same problem. So where one might have not so much of, of um, access to resources, another might have more access to those resources, but together we can then create an ecosystem where if you're a startup, if you're a company, if you're a corporation, you know what your next step is on that pathway. And this is particularly important because Houston is the country's most diverse city. So when we think of Houston, as, as uh, Dr. Steven Kleinberg over at the Kinder Institute says, he, he says it's the prophetic city. And, and that's a great book if you haven't read it. We truly are a prophetic city because we are in the present what he, what the rest of the country will look like in the future. And so if we don't actively seek to understand what this diversity means and how we make sure that we're including people who have historically not been included in city building, um, in, the, in having access to these opportunities, um, we've got to be able to do this in order to build that sustainable and equitable city of the future, that innovation of the future. So I know I've kind of meandered around a bit, but we're achieving the goals and in particular goal 11, because we are taking a very critical eye to how partnerships can be leveraged in their alignment to that goal, rather than how each individual organization can slowly chip away at the goal. Well, Christine, it's so incredibly well said and, and just beyond inspiring. Uh, you know, I love the notion of centralized collisions, collaboration, and innovation. I mean, I, I, I promise you I will utilize that and quote you appropriately, I will. But that is a, is a way to really describe exactly what the ION is and the work that you're doing there with, again, these centralized collisions, collaboration, and innovation. I love that. I just love that. And so recently, we saw two incredible updates coming out of the ION, which first is the launch of the Aerospace Innovation Accelerator, and then also to empower entrepreneurs in the ION Smart Resilient Cities Accelerator, which basically doubles down on empowering sustainably focused technologies. Incredible. Can you share with our audience a little bit, a little bit, as much as you can, about these updates? Yes, I, I sure can. And, and you said, you know, share a little bit. And in my mind, I said, oh my goodness, this is, this is, you know, 40 minutes in and of itself because we're so proud of the startups um, in our cohort. And so I'll talk a little bit about each separately. Um, the ION Smart and Resilient Cities Accelerator is in its third cohort. So we launched um, in September of 2019 and we're now in our third cohort. And what we do here in our 12 week program is we kind of focus on the themes that are relevant to the city of Houston. So this cohort, our theme is sustainability. And that's that's no kind of accident because we align to the resilient Houston strategy and the climate action plan for our, for our city. So we work hand in hand. I mentioned the city of Houston is one of our partners, Jesse Bounds and his team at the Office of Innovation, um, Lara Cottingham and her team with the Climate Action Plan, Marissa Ajo and her team and her deputy resilience officers throughout the city and her resilient Houston strategy. We work hand in hand with them to ensure that startups have a pipeline coming in through our program to pilot opportunities. So a lot of C words, connections, collaborations, collisions, a lot of P words, pilots, pipeline, pathways, programs, partners. Um, but in the Ion Smart and Resilient Cities Accelerator, that is how we get that alignment to the central goals as articulated in our Resilient Houston Strategy and Climate Action Plan. And so a little shout out to the startups who are all tackling 
some of those goals articulated in our strategies. So that way we know that there's alignment from both sides. So we've got a phase filter with our kinetic synergies, um, which is working on an automatically changing air filter that works with existing HVAC systems to lower cost and energy use. So this is something that I think everyone can use as a, a system for changing your air filter automatically because how many times have you forgotten to change your air filter, right? Um, Fractal is creating a circular economy um, by repurposing and reusing discarded polymer materials from the greater Gulf Coast region to use in the same region. So that type of circular economy also creates sustainability. Moonshot Compost is a company that has collected food waste from Houston residents and businesses via curbside pickup and drop off. So they also provide data around composting and honestly, they couldn't make it any easier for us to compost. Teratonics is actually a using radio frequency and electromagnetic from uh, waves from radio and TV broadcasting, cell phone towers, Wi-Fi routers, and more to provide solutions to generate electricity. I had no idea this was possible, right? Yet there's a startup here in our very own cohort doing that. And then our fifth startup in the cohort, Smart Watts, is a company that taps into smart meter sensors to enable a personalized energy monitoring dashboard that provides users with data to make better energy use decisions. So I, I think we have a breadth of startups in our cohort that are very strategically tackling these goals. So that's the ION Smart and Resilient Cities Accelerator. And then we recently launched the ION Aerospace Innovation Accelerator. And I am so proud of the startups in this cohort because they're not only taking and working on, on technology that can take us to space. So that's kind of from the ground to space, but they're also tackling the piece of tech transfer where supposing NASA has some type of technology and NASA and Div Inc are our partners um, in the Aerospace Innovation Accelerator. So supposing NASA has that technology how can that be leveraged to challenges on earth, here on earth? So we do this, um, and it, uh, funded by a grant from the Minority Business um, Development Agency. So a huge shout out to them. And then the Ion Smart and Resilient Cities Accelerator is also uh, funded by the EDA. The, so we're very happy and thrilled to have them on board as well. But the Aerospace Innovation Accelerator for Minority Business Enterprises elevates um, a unique approach to not only networking and to community building events, but also education and training and then our focus on the startups. So we've got four startups um, in our cohort, which are tackling a range of, of space-related and also earth-related challenges. So Stratos Perception develops artificial intelligence solutions for space systems to benefit human productivity, safety, and enterprise. Nanco Aero, um, provides urban air vehicles and drones to commercial, small business, government, and nonprofit organizations. Boozed Beverages is specializing in intelligent vending in the liquor industry. So if you've ever been to a party and waited a few extra minutes for that drink, Boozed is solving that problem. And then Axialnix Systems is an aerospace technology platform developing a disc wing rotor aircraft concept which takes off as a helicopter, carries as much payload as an airplane, and flies just as fast beyond the range of typical helicopters. So our startups are truly transforming our ecosystem because they're tackling problems here on Earth and in space. And so we refer to the two accelerator programs kind of as a smart city, space city, um, because the, those two lenses really help us think through city building, going back to the sustainable development goals, they think through city building as, a sustain, as an effort to create sustainability. So I've talked way too long, but I, am, I love bragging on our startups. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and, and, and for real, I mean, you could go on and on forever <laughs> based on all of the incredible innovation and tech startups that you're working with. And it's just remarkable to hear just the wide range of the impact that they're all making. It's, 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 it's absolutely exactly what you described earlier, that collision, the collaboration, the innovation, it's all happening. And it's happening because 
the ION is bringing all these folks together to make all this possible. And a shout out to Microsoft for being one of those lead organizations at the ION to help make it all happen and be that glue. And so leadership, shifting the leadership for a moment. Christine, you see a lot of these leaders in these tech companies, they're working hard, but at the end, what they all have in common is they're leading. They're making whatever it is that they're working on possible. Christine, what is one, that one key trait that you feel is the glue, is that element for that collision and the collaboration and ultimately the innovation to take place from a leader? I love that question, George. And when you asked it, I said, you know, do I do I clue them in on the real secret to leadership, which is something that I've come back to countless times in, in the work that I do and in, in the uh, people who I work with. And it comes back to, for me, asking questions. And uh, it, I, I say this because once someone gets to that position of leadership, there tends to be a complacency where you think, well, I, I'm a leader now and I have this title or I have this position or I have, you know, fill in the blank that makes me a leader. But that that's not what leadership is. And I think we can all kind of go back in our minds to examples of people who, who believe that and we think, well, you know, they're really not leaders. Leadership comes back to asking questions and asking the tough questions because the expertise that gets you to leadership, it does not mean that you know all the answers. It only means that you can ask better questions. So that's a really important distinction for me. As leaders, we've got to ask questions and then not be afraid as to what those answers say. Right, so so there's a whole lot more behind that, but I think I'll just leave us with the two words, ask questions. You know, that is profound. Uh, ask questions is absolutely critical, and what an incredible trait that you've identified that leaders must have and must employ. Ask questions. Be inquisitive to make the right decisions. Christine, ending on this question, which we feel is very important, what is your call to action for our global audience today? And that's such a great question. And I will say, aside from asking questions, um, show up, put yourself out there, right? Um, you use that, that word being inquisitive, being curious, put yourself out there. If, you, if you've got an idea, if you see a problem, if you, if you imagine that there's a better world because you're not content with the world that we're currently living in, follow where that imagination leads you and explore that. So show up. There are tons of innovation ecosystems and hubs all across the world. Find one, go to one, talk to someone, get plugged in. So thank you so much uh, for listening. Christine Galeb, Senior Director of Programs at the ION, thank you for all you're doing to change the world each and every day. We're honored to be working together. And it's also my honor to be working with you all, uh, George, Christian, IdeaGen, the whole team, just changing the world because you're creating access and, and you're enabling us to expand into territories that we might not have expanded before because you are that glue that holds the globe together. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. That's very kind, Christine. Thank you. And, and we admire everything you're doing at the ION. It's, it's truly remarkable. Thank you. Thank you again for all you're doing to change the world. Christine Galeb, Senior Director of Programs at the ION, IdeaGen Global, presented globally by Microsoft.